All right, I'm back into the Ford 555. Five, five. Here's the injector pump. So it's the Lucas CAV and it's a DPA model. Um, talked to a guy that knows about these and he seemed to think it's uh, if the veins are no good, it's gonna be over a grand to get this thing fixed up. So figured I'd take a run at it. Um, so I started on doing some things here, uh, two eight mils on the excess fuel line port right there. And then uh, four more eight mils right on the end here. And this is the inlet. This is where your diesel comes in. Uh, the main pump, I guess, is in here. And these are the injectors. This is a three cylinder. All right, there you go. There's that. And this is what this looks like. So here's like an X of rubber veins and those spin and that's the pump right there. So we're gonna remove that from there. Um, and if you look in here, hard to see with the light, but you can see it spinning around there. There's a whole bunch of letters and stuff on in there. But I know you can't script the timing because there's a lobe here on the timing gear. So take this apart, see what it looks like. All right, so getting into the uh, fuel intake here on the inside, the first thing you're gonna get out is the large spring. So that kind of sits inside this little basket, a filter I should say, suction filter. And there's another spring in there, I'll take that off. Oops. There's a little plug thing there that goes in the end of the spring. And then that will plug the end of this guy. Inside there, another little spring. And it's got a rubber seal on the very bottom there. And that bounces on here. Sorry, not the rubber seal, but the little uh, piston inside here. Let's see. There it is. So a little piston inside there. If it falls too far, it's gonna bounce off this little tiny spring, blasting out of the housing. And then uh, on the top side of that piston is the smaller spring in there. And then the larger spring with its little top hat plugs that up like so. And then the suction filter right over top of the whole thing, right like that, goes into the casing, and then uh, the fuel inlet valve, or uh, fitting, whatever it's called, screws on the top of there. I also took these guys off. These are uh, in the side here, the three of them, so these are, feed the hard lines. So I had some leaks on these guys. Um, so I'm going to look up and see if there's a good way to fix the leaks between those. If you can just rub it with some emery paper or not. And then uh, these guys have seals on them. You can see the little washer there. So there's a little hole in here, a little hole up in there. So when that's lined up and these are threaded in, that's going to feed your injector. All right, so uh, on top here, there's two 10 mil um, they're funny little tapered wire caps, and there was a wire going through there um, to stop them from coming undone, and it had a little kind of soft metal thing on it. There's another one up front here. I'm not really sure what this is. I can't imagine this actually controls anything. Um, but there's that, it's loose. If you know what it is, let me know. Okay, so pulling this top off, um, this is like the fuel kill here. So he's got a square hole in himself there, or sorry, rectangle. So that can only go one way back on. And uh, that had a little star washer and this eight mil on here. And then same thing with the throttle. It's got a kind of a fancy little top hat. And then again, the uh, star washer and an eight mil. And then that just, that guy just lifts off as well. It has 
an assembly. Okay, and then these two 10 mils coming off. Now we gotta look in here. There's a spring that connects both. Okay, I'm gonna rejig here. Okay, dumped on her side there. Um, so this is the throttle right here. And underneath there in the underside of the lid, you can see the linkage. Now there's three, sorry about the light. We got a headlamp here. So there's three holes and on the top half we're in the center hole. So I need to make note of that. And then again, um, over on this side, three holes and we're in the center hole again where this goes. So now I can uh, unhook that spring and then we'll take a better look at what's going on inside here. Okay, tops off. Um, there's that little arm there on the throttle. You can see I can move it there with one hand barely. Anyway, so that uh, linkage holds the other side of this spring. So when you put on the throttle, you're sliding this back and forth. There's a little connecting rod that heads up here to the front. Moving along, uh, here's the keeper for the spring. And that again was just in the center hole there. And then uh, these guys have little ear tabs there. And I just pop those down with a cold chisel. I just kind of get in between them there and just push them down. And that enables you to spin these, these guys off. Um, and then that arm will come out right there. And this guy. You can see that uh, the open-ended bit was pointing down over the hole. Now this guy comes out. And then this here is all of a, it's a spring. And this is obviously adjusted properly. So if you just pull back on. Okay, one last tiny little screw. So this guy was like a, I used a quarter inch box in on it. You can see it's got a little flange and then three fingers that stand up that you got to pop down with a chisel or a screwdriver. Uh, and he came out of right here, right on the top. Uh, so that's the last thing holding this assembly in and we can lift this up. So this bracket is down in the governor housing there. And then this little metering valve in the back here, it's a metering valve, I guess. That's what it was said anyway. So I need to take some, take a good look at this, see if it needs cleaning. Looks kind of dirty to me. Pretty, uh, that's the varnish from the diesel. So that'll sit there. And then I'm just looking at the, trying to get focused. So there's definitely some pitting there. Don't think it wipes off. And then down in here, that's where that uh, bracket was sitting. Uh, I'm gonna remove the auto timing device here. Um, so I used a 24 mil socket. So I got a single plug uh, out of the top and then out of the bottom. So there's that, what I'm calling the top, sorry. And then out of the bottom here is uh, it's a spring inside a spring, inside a plug. You can see that pushes on a piston. So the piston's moving freely in there, which it's supposed to. And then I had a 19 mil this guy, which is also a retaining bolt. So when this guy comes out, it's got a bunch of washers and, and uh, threads under there. And then this one was a 13 mil cap. And once that's off, this just lifts off. So there's a piston in there. You can see it moves quite freely. And uh, this guy, manipulates that piston and there's a spring holding it in place so we'll get all that cleaned up the piston will come right out of there now no problem and that end of it is cupped so that end that's cupped is where the uh, the spring pack goes in there so now I'm gonna get a big crescent wrench on this guy 
spin him off. And then there's two more of these head retaining bolts. One here, this is a funny looking one. It's got a copper washer with it. And then there's one more on what is now the bottom. And again, it has a copper washer on it. So now that those are off, this whole piece should just come right out. Now I'm gonna make note of uh, the U. The U right there is right by my tag. And there's the holes there. So if that's lined up and this U is by the tag, when I put it back together, then it's going the right way. Okay, so I'll pull that out now. All right, so here this comes out just like that. So right here is a seal that I'm definitely gonna be replacing. It wasn't leaking, but that'll come in the rebuild kit. And then there's the three little cam rollers there up in this top assembly. So these guys are free spinning in here and they run around in that uh, six sided, it's got kind of bumps in it. So as the cam hit those ridges, it pushes them in or out. And this is the, uh, this is the advanced timing. So this little guy here was in here and that's what was getting pushed by the inside of that piston. So that essentially changes the timing, right? So everything's gonna, it's gonna, I guess, squirt diesel out of each injector slightly before. You can see there's an arrow on there pointing up and then the CAV. So that's the next bit out. Um, everything looks pretty good. I don't see any issues with any of this. I'll be replacing, uh, obviously most of this little wear parts and gaskets. And then over to this side, I popped two of the bolts back in that were holding the sprocket on. And I was able to put a screwdriver in there and then I used a big 3 16 Allen. Pulled that out of the center. And then this guy comes right out. Excuse me. There we go in there. There's a washer down in there. I can feel it. Oh, another one came out the front there. Lock nut. And then if you look in there, we can see the shaft. Now, when you're taking these apart, you don't have to worry too much because all these shafts are uh, splined in a unique way. It's hard to see in this one, but right at the bottom, or sorry, not the bottom, right in there, you can see it's a larger gap. There's only one way they can go back on. So that's pretty torn down now. I've got a couple more things to pull out here. Okay, so this piece slid right out and uh, I put the little nubber back on there, but you can see it's got a cutout here uh, for some sort of alignment. And I'm not 100% sure how that works. Uh, the next piece to come out was a circlip. Uh, really big sucker and I couldn't quite see how this circlip is lining up with that cut uh, but nonetheless I did mark it put a little tiny scratch right in there so that's where that's going to line up with when it goes back together uh, and after that pulled out and the main uh, I guess these are the, the governor weights in here so these guys are quite heavy uh, in here and this pulls up. So that is the fork. Well, it's right here. This guy was dipped down in the top there. Remember this? So when that was pulled on, this little fork here would grab in here. And that'll adjust the weights which I'm assuming would push the centrifugal force outwards more and making it spin faster or slower. Or I'm assuming it makes it spin faster. It uh, increased demand for fuel when it's needed. So it all makes sense uh, roughly when you slide this guy 
you're going to change the timing for the fuel and then as those cam rollers roll through here they're going to create that pumping action probably not quite saying it right but i do grasp how this thing works completely stripped down now uh, ready to be cleaned up and figure out exactly what i've got my hands on here so i can get the um, rebuild kit on its way